An ERC721 token is a token that is non-fungible. That means that each token is unique. You can't necessarily exchange one for the other and still have the same thing. Uh, traditionally, when people talk about tokens, they're referring to ERC20 tokens. If you recall from the Create Your Own Token tutorial, which I'll link to here, an ERC20 token is basically just a tally of which addresses have how many tokens. If I have 20 of some ERT, ERC20 tokens and you have 20 of the same ERC20 tokens, I send you my 20 and you send me your 20, effectively nothing has changed. The, the tally still shows that you have 20 and I have 20. Um, the only thing that's really changed is the amount of Ether we each have uh, since we would have had to pay the gas fees in those two transactions. However, with an ERC721 token, it matters which token we each have. If I have one token and you have one token and I send you mine and you send me yours, the situation has changed. It's not just a tally, each of us have an actually different token. Helps to think of it in, um, as if they represented real world things. And all these examples going forward, we're gonna keep things in the digital realm, but think of it as representing a real world, a real world item. Um, think of an ERC721 token that represents 2006 Honda Civics. If I have a 2006 Honda Civic and you have a 2006 Honda Civic and we switch tokens or cars, um, then really we still have, um, we have different cars in that scenario. Even though we, have, we both still have one 2006 Honda Civic, each one has its own dents and dings, they have different mileage, and they're really not the same car. It's the same way with ERC721 tokens. So now that we understand what an ERC721 token basically is, let's go ahead and create one. This video is part of a series. If you want to know the big picture about what we're building, check out the introduction video here. Otherwise, let's jump right in and build something. So we're going to create a really, really basic ERC721 token. Now, this turns out to be very, very easy to do because ERC721 is, of course, a standard. So it's really just uh, mostly copying and pasting. Um, check out erc721.org for a lot of the finer details. Um, if you want to really deep dive into it, they have a ton of examples here, and they have the standard itself published. So, however, what we're going to be using in future videos is the Open Zeppelin um, implementation of the ERC721 standard. Um, as with most things Ethereum development related, Open Zeppelin has really good implementation of any standards um, and any kind of common use cases that have evolved from those standards. So this is the library we'll be using. Let's go ahead and take a look at the standard itself in its most basic form. So the big thing that sticks out is on any event transfer, there's a token ID. It's not just the from address or the to address. There's this token ID. That's because of the non-fungibility of all these tokens. Every single token has a unique ID. So you'll see there's still a concept of a balance of. Um, even though each token has a token ID that is unique, say I have five of them, there's still situations where you would want to know how many in total this address has. So there's still the basic token functionality that is expected. Um, with the addition of these unique token IDs. So in order to create our own ERC721, we have to make an implementation, we have to make an implementation of this standard. So here in the remix.ethereum.org IDE, I've got the most basic implementation of what that could look like. Um, this is not the end form of the contract that we'll be using in the game, you know, several videos down the line in this playlist. But this is the most basic one. We'll be adding much more to it as we go along, but I wanted to show you f what the first step is. This is really step zero uh, in programmer parlance. Um, so we really just import the standard. Again, we're using the open, Ze open Zeppelin version of it. Uh, and then we cr create an implementation of that standard. We say my ERC721 is an ERC721 token. Then we get all the functionality that Open Zeppelin and the ERC721 standard itself has given us in those imported contracts. So then in the constructor, when we first instantiate this token, when we de first deploy it to the blockchain, that is, we'll give it a name and a symbol, then the rest pretty much takes care of itself. Um, you'll notice this function called mint unique token too. Um, again, we see this token ID. When a new token is created, it gets assigned a new token ID, and then that token is sent to a specific user. So it's really that simple. Um, if this looks completely foreign to you, I highly recommend you going back and watching the video on ERC 
20 tokens and just any other videos on here with solidity development in general but if you're familiar with the ERC 20 and implementing those this is going to look very familiar to you and there's not a whole lot of extra work you have to do so the next case would be to deploy this to deploy this contract but what we want to do first is really set up a whole development environment. Smart contracts don't exist on their own. There's a whole website that's going to go up around this that is used to let the user interact with the smart contract instead of having to go interact with the blockchain directly. This is what we call a decentralized application. So in order to do that, there's a lot of really good tools out there now. We're not going to do it all through this um, you know, web-based IDE or anything. There's a platform called Shruffle that we're going to use in order to do all this. So in the next video, we're going to get our, our Truffle project set up and actually make use of this ERC721 token and get it deployed to the blockchain.